With Session Update, I'm Julie Bartke. On the Senate floor on Friday, members took up the energy finance bill. Senator John Marty discussed his bill on this week's Capitol report. He says it moves the state away from fossil fuel-based energy towards renewable energy, primarily solar. It also mandates utilities to provide 1% of their energy through solar and provides greater financial incentives for individuals to add solar to their homes. Senator Julie Rosen called it a bad bill with bad policy. Here are some of the arguments that surfaced on the Senate floor. Continually bring up the cost of nuclear and coal. Senator Peterson was exactly right. They are reliable sources of energy. There is a value to every member in this body to flip a switch at their home and have a light come on. Now, Senator Marty, when solar figures out how to be stored overnight, how to be put on the grid in an orderly manner, then we can do a realistic comparison of what solar gives to our indus en energy industry. Just the fact that you are having to do this much work to push solar onto our electric grid and into the state's electric plan means it's not ready. There needs to be more development. Members, the costs are going to go up for every business in this state. The tax bill had data center provisions in it. So give them a tax break, but then smack them with electric costs? That doesn't seem like a very good way to welcome them to Minnesota. You want to protect businesses, exempt them from all the costs that are continuing to go up from coal and nuclear power, from the traditional energy sources, because those sources are going to continue to get more expensive. Whether you like it or not, they pollute a lot. Even if you don't factor in the environmental costs, you do have to meet the standards that are toughening up, that are increasing the costs. And if you're worried about a half a percent increase here, then maybe you ought to be a little more concerned about the 10, 15 percent rate increases that they're facing otherwise. I don't know that I recall any opening fishing season when we went to northern Minnesota where we haven't been able to find a place to fish. Uh, I'm not sure that the globe is warming quite as much as everybody says. As a matter of fact, I'll go on record and say that I know and I do agree that the globe is warming, but it is warming in such an insignificant manner over hundreds of years that really, quite frankly, Minnesotans, do you think that we can make that difference here in Minnesota by ourselves? I don't think so. And I don't think so either when we're in tough times, when money's strapped, and Senator Marty, you've been a, you've been stalwart when it comes to energy, and, and, I, and, I, I, and I can appreciate that, but I, I can't appreciate the fact that, that the, uh, the, the facts aren't there, they're just not there, and we're the very people that you care about, the needy, the, the elderly, the uh, sick, the impoverished, those that are in nursing homes are going again, once again, without an increase, without a significant increase. And what are we doing? We're spending money on global warming. My good friend, Senator Ingebrigtsen, who suggested that the problem of climate change is many, many, many years away, and that our role in this is, could at best be a minor one. Let me just offer by contrast, if I might, just for, for a minute, an amazing documentary I saw a couple of months ago called Chasing, Chasing Ice. Uh, nature photographer James Balog went to National Geographic for funding for the documentary. And what he took pictures of with time-lapse photography was the melting of the glaciers in Alaska, Greenland, and Iceland. Let me read just one brief paragraph from a review of the documentary. There's awe as well and nearly unfathomable scale like video of a slab of ice the size of lower Manhattan and thicker than those sky skyscrapers are tall, breaking off Greenland's Jacobian Glacier. I haven't met the sentence that can truly describe what that looks like. Members, his photography was for a period of three years. The breaking off of glaciers the size of lower Manhattan in a three-year period. That's why we don't have decades and decades and centuries and centuries to wait, and that's why we need to do our part in our part of the world, the state of Minnesota. 
to facilitate ending fossil fuel use in power generation, heating and cooling industry and transportation. Members, if you believe in this policy, then go ahead and vote for the bill. For you rural members, if you believe ending the use of fossil fuels is good, go ahead and vote for the bill. Then go explain to the farmers in your district why they're not going to be able to use diesel or gasoline in their tractors or their equipment or anything they use to power uh, things on their farms. Explain to the people in your small towns why they're no longer going to be able to use gasoline in their cars because we've put into policy in Minnesota that we want to end the use of fossil fuels. What this bill does try to do is to get a start to the solar industry in Minnesota, which is happening in many other states. Again, this would be the lowest solar standard of any of the states. But it's trying to jumpstart that industry in the state because it is a very promising one for cost reasons, for environmental reasons, for job reasons. A lot of electrical workers who are out of work waiting since the recession, waiting for jobs. You know, per megawatt of solar power, it's about 17 jobs. We focused on the, focused on the manufacturing jobs. It's about two of those 17 jobs. Other 15 are installation, maintenance, repair. Those are real jobs. And basically, you know, if, if solar power is a little bit more expensive now, which it is, what we're basically substituting is fuel costs, which the state ships out $13 billion a year. For perspective, that's about two-thirds the size of the general fund budget every year. We ship $13 billion out of the state to bring in coal, uranium, natural gas, oil. We ship that money out of the state never to return, except as fuel that's burned once and it's gone. To track the final vote on the energy bill and to track other work from Senate Media Services, you can follow us by following our Twitter, our Facebook, and our YouTube accounts.